Hey guys, and welcome back to the Matthew 514 podcast. Today, I'm so excited because we have the first guest on the podcast, and that is Miss Raven Judkins. Raven has been such an inspiration to my life. She contains so much wisdom. She is so kind and sweet and joyful and so funny. So I can't wait for you guys to hear all the wisdom that she has to share today. And I know you guys are going to learn so much, and I hope you guys finish listening to this podcast and love her as much as I do. So let's... Say hello to Miss Raven. Aw, thanks, Car. Um, I am so honored and excited to be here, be a part of this. When Carter told me about this podcast, I was nothing but just like all in and um, just so excited for everything. I, I pray that whoever's on the other side of this hearing this, that you will be encouraged and a little bit challenged as well. Um, Carter is amazing and obedient and surrendered. And so I know that there's going to be so much fruit that comes from this. So, so excited to be here. All righty. Well, let's dive into the first question. So the first thing I want to ask is what have you learned through being single Mm -hmm. and, you know, your story maybe with singleness and even your age with being single, especially I know in like the world of ministry, sometimes being not that you're old, but you know, (laughs) older in your twenties, sometimes like most people like, you know, have the definition, Oh, you're married by now. If you're in the church scene. So just kind of like your journey through singleness and what have you learned? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I am 23 and um, I've been single, you know, haven't, I've dated one time and I think I've learned a lot about singleness. Um, I'm actually writing a book on it because of so many things that the Lord has uh, impressed on my heart. But I would say one of the biggest things, and I hope that you don't like tune it out as soon as you hear this, but that singleness is a gift. And some people, I think, hear that and they think, oh, well, that's just a cop out or, you know, that's just fluff or whatever, but it's so true. And the Bible talks about it. Paul literally says that it is a gift um, and that it would be better for somebody to remain single is the way that he has that perspective on it. Um, and so I've really learned that a gift is a gift no matter what, but it's up to you whether or not you use it. And so there's sometimes like when you get something for Christmas or a birthday that someone gifts you with and you're like, I have no use for this. And it kind of goes on a shelf or it goes in storage or something. Um, and you kind of forget about it or maybe you goodwill it right away. Um, and we can't do that with singleness. We've got to be so intentional to steward that gift well. And so that's what this journey has looked like. Okay, God, wherever you have me, wherever you've placed me, um, I'm obviously single for a reason. And so I'm going to use that for your kingdom to build your kingdom. And I'm going to find the beauty in it. I'm going to like steward this gift, like I said. And um, I just have a passion for other people seeing that. I think that as a Christian and as a single woman, I want people to look at me and see Jesus. And so if I'm single and I'm like pouting about it all the time, or if I'm single and I'm constantly wishing away that gift and I'm a Christian, then people might start to think, well, then that's okay. Um, And it's not okay. (laughs) Like we have to, whatever season we're in, be joyful in all things. Um, And so I want to be clear that I do have a desire to be married, um, a desire that I've had since I was a little girl. But I know that if I'm not married, there's purpose in whatever season I'm found in. And then when I am, Lord willing, married, that there's purpose in that season as well. And so for anyone listening, like that's the same for you as well. There's always a purpose in your season. And if you are single, it is a gift. And so um, I hope that you can navigate and find a way to steward it well using, you know, any resources that you find out there. I'm not going to say my book or anything. <laughs> uh, but I just, I think that's huge. And um, I went through high school, never dated, went through college, never dated. When I graduated from college about a year or two after, I did get in a relationship. Um, it was very short, and I, I thank the Lord that I learned a lot from it. But once I knew that this wasn't a man that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, then I surrendered that to the Lord and called it off. Um, but I'm grateful, again, for that experience, for that learning. And so I'm not wholeheartedly, like, committed to singleness and committed to being married. Like, I'm just committed to the Lord and whatever path he wants me to go on. Um, and just learning, like, there is purpose in the season. And what does that look like, God? How can I honor you in my singleness? You've given me gifts and talents. You've given me time that maybe a married person or a mom with kids doesn't have. And so I want to use that for your glory and for your kingdom. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that is so great. I feel like there's so much wisdom in that. And I definitely have a couple questions I'm going to ask you about it. But I want to highlight on one thing first before we dive into the questions is that like 
not only like stewarding, you know, singleness, like we're caught to that, but right. like it's a reminder to steward any season. Yeah, yeah. And I know, like, I heard this saying before from a book when, like, the single person is worried about dating, mm-hmm. and then the dating person is worried about engagement, and then the engaged person is worried about marriage, and then the married person is worried about kids. Yeah. So it's like whatever season you're in, and not even relational, right, but like right. job statuses, right. friendships, yep. you know, sports. Okay. Um, anything it's so easy to look to that next best thing yep. and like i think that that's a reminder not just in to be like you know content and yeah. see singleness as a gift right. but see every season as a gift and that speaks more you know about your faith then because right. if you're joyful in the good seasons right then what like that show? yeah know, that doesn't show anything yeah. but when you're joyful when the storms come and the hard yeah. you know times right. come and you're in the seasons that you know are not smiled Absolutely. upon yeah. you're frowned upon but you still have a smile on your face yeah that's been a, you know, leading right. to Jesus. Right. So, um, so I really want to highlight on that. Um, and I know you had said, you know, when we get a gift that we don't like, you know, it's easy for us to give yeah. it away. I remember one time when we were at, when I was in, um, doing youth groups, yeah. when I was still in high school, you, um, told a story about your cycling shoes. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so if you want to share that story, yeah. Yeah. then we would love to hear that as like that, you know, comparison right. for what that looks like in a literal sense. Yeah. That's so sweet that you remember that, too. I love that. Um, yeah, so I had shared, I was talking on singleness, and I had just shared that I am obsessed with cycling, and I, like, challenged myself, if I commit to 100 cycle classes, then I will get myself a pair of spin shoes. And they're only, like, 100 some dollars, mm-hmm. but I was like, I'm not going to buy this and not use them well or anything. Yeah. Um, and so I found a really good brand, but lots of people recommend it. And one of my friends said, hey, you need to size down half a size. And I said, okay. And so I bought the shoes. And then the first, like, five cycle classes, I was like, these shoes suck. Like, they do not fit me. They're <laughs> squeezing me. It's so uncomfortable. Um, and I wanted to just give up. And I was like, I don't want to use these anymore. Like, they're not good shoes. Um, and then I had realized, like, I had to just keep using them and keep using them until they stretched out and molded to my feet better. And then I realized, wait, this is actually the perfect gift for me. This is the perfect thing that I need to cycle well because it definitely changes the cycle game. But I had to adjust my perspective on the shoes. I had to keep pursuing. And like the Bible says, like, keep pressing on towards the goal of the prize of Christ. Like, that's what you have to do. And so I just related that back to singleness. Um, And really, like we said, like any gift in the season. Uh, maybe it seems uncomfortable, but instead of first like blaming the gift and wanting to give that up so easily and so quickly, we have to like internally like look and say, okay, maybe it's just about me pressing on. Maybe yeah. it's about not giving up and then learning, okay, yeah, actually this is perfect and this is where I'm meant to be. Um, and so, yeah, that was a little bit about our cycle shoe connection. <laughs> yes, I think that's so perfect. And I know like I love, like, I mean, Jesus taught with parables. Yeah. And yes. so like he literally gave us, physical and real examples right. to show stuff so like having the yeah. shoes connect is so awesome and I love how you said like don't give up with it because I yeah. think so many people they feel lonely in singleness right. so they give up yeah. or they feel afraid in singleness so they yeah. give up yeah. and I think it's so easy for them to just rush into a relationship right. and then most of the time they find themselves in a relationship that's not good for them and, you know, that isn't leading them, yeah. them to Christ. But you said how, you know, you had dated somebody and yeah. you knew it wasn't from God, so you got out. Yeah. And I think that is such a testimony because I, you know, was in a relationship right. not too long ago where I knew the person wasn't from God and I stayed in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that ultimately led to sin right. and to a lot more hurt if I had gone yeah. out a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a reminder, once again, to any season, if, like, we know that it's not from God right. – and we know that, like, a friend we're hanging out with, yeah. the job we're in, so good. an outfit we're wearing, a, yeah. you know, action we're partaking in is not from God, then we need to get out because it's only going to yep. hinder the season we're right. in. Um, and just how you said, like, you know, you need to learn how to steward singleness. Yeah. There's, like, the, there's the two sides to that. You can steward it for bad yeah. and, yeah. you know, partake in the bad things, hang out with the bad friends, right. you know, or rush into a bad relationship. Or you can steward it for good and, yeah. you know, cycle. Yeah. And, you Ooh. know... <laughs> meet with friends godly community you know go to church i think that's so important to highlight on is that like how we spend our time in singleness um really reflects how we're going to spend our life in other seasons as well oh that's so good if we're trying to rush out of singleness and we're not stewarding this season well then that's our mindset in dating so we're not going to date well yeah and then we're not going to be engaged well it's like we need to learn 
And then even if, you know, because I feel like there's been people listening that are in relationships yeah. already, but even, you know, if they're in a relationship, start learning how to steward it yeah. now versus trying to just rush to the next yeah, thing. Yeah, go to what's next, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Well, goodness, so much wisdom was just oh, back yeah. to that one <laughs> question. Um, so then I kind of, this might have already been answered, but I really want to, like, like, I guess, you know, make it a statement. Yeah. What do you, like, what is the biggest piece of advice that you want people to know about being single? Like, if you yeah. could, like, share one thing about it, like, what do you want people to know? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we definitely, you know, talked about the gift part, but I would say that it's not a punishment and that marriage is not a reward for being single well. Because mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people, or not seen, but heard a lot of people saying things along the lines of, like, well, you know, when I was ready, then God brought me da, 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 this relationship or my husband. And I think that that might be true for your story or your perspective of it. But the, I don't think that's the baseline because if singleness is a gift, a gift is something that you can't earn and something that can't be taken away. And so when we have that singleness is a gift, then it's not like you're being punished because of a yeah. past sin. Um, or because you skipped church last Sunday, like God isn't like that waiting for you to trip up and mess up and then saying, okay, I'm going to withhold this one thing that you really want. The Bible says that he doesn't withhold any good thing from us. So if you're in singleness, it's good. And it's something that maybe your perspective needs to shift on. You need um, to approach the throne of grace and just say, Lord, give me a heart of flesh and not of stone towards yeah. this because I feel so overwhelmed and discouraged and it doesn't feel good. Um, and then knowing when you're single that, like we've kind of touched on like marriage is not the end goal and it's not a reward of like check I was single for three years I did it really well I was serving I went on six missions trips like I healed cancer and it's it's (laughs) none of those things it's like it is that is a separate gift from God they're both gifts and so there's nothing that any of us can do to earn it or to take it away Um, of course there is like natural consequence of sin of okay well if you were unfaithful in your marriage then maybe a consequence is that divorce and you lose that gift Um, but as far as it's from the Lord like he's not going to be like okay withholding or giving this to you because you did something right that's just not the God we serve and that's not his standard for singleness for marriage and so if you're listening I just I think that that's super important and I wish that someone would have told me that because I grew up in the church and it was always like what womanly Christian things can I do so that I can ensure that I get married Um, and so I left uh, high school with this huge expectation and weight on college of like I'm gonna meet the one because I like the Lord transformed my life like I'm surrendered and I have this intimacy with him and I'm serving and then I went through college and was still like on fire for the Lord and realized okay then I graduated and I I praise the Lord that like he gave me this purpose perspective on singleness so that I didn't graduate college discouraged of like well why is me here like what I'm doing all these things for you um because I would have missed out on so much of the beauty of singleness that I have now that I've learned through then um if I would have viewed it as a punishment or thought like okay where's my reward like where's my cookie for doing well (laughs) on this test lord um because it's a gift and he wants us to see that that it's not a punishment and that there's not marriage always waiting on the other side and I think that like if it's a desire of your heart nine times out of ten he's gonna be faithful in delivering that but sometimes it's just okay God and I trust you yeah like this is good where I'm at is good and I choose to steward it for a good thing and not just make up my mind that it's bad and and try to wish my way out of it so I think that's so good just like knowing single is a gift yeah um and you can steward it well um and I know for me how you said, you know, going through singleness well isn't just, you know, so you can earn your cookie yeah, on marriage. Yeah, right. And I know when I, because um, it was before I went into the relationship, yeah. so two, no, it was a little under two years ago. Yeah. I had given my life to saving single, right. if you remember that. Yeah. And I really had the mindset more that I had to do this season well mm-hmm. in order to earn the next season. Right, right. And I fell into the trap of that. And so singleness yeah. was just like, you know, being good enough for the yeah. right person. Right. And then, so as soon as a person came along, like, oh, I just felt yeah. like, right. oh, well, this makes sense. Like, this is Absolutely. who it is. And I'm, I'm actually writing the book right now that you yeah. got, and one day you guys are going to know about it too. Um, but I'm writing a chapter about singleness in yeah. it just because, you know, through it, the book's going to be about breakups and 
you know, singleness and breakups, they, yeah. go, they go together. They go together. And I wrote that, you know, God has shown this to me that singleness isn't just about, you know, going through the motions and yeah. trying to check all the boxes so you can be ready for marriage. So singleness yeah. is about being content in the season and realizing, like, you're not going to leave it for anything but what God has yeah. for you. Yeah. And I think before, like, I was just ready to leave it for any relationship. Right. Now, I'm not ready to leave the season unless... Yes. I know it's a relationship from yes. God because right. I'd rather have my soul intact yes. and have God number one and be right. single than to be in a relationship that yeah. leads me away from God. And I think that's such a great reminder to know, you know, don't date people just for fun. Don't yeah. date people, you know, just to have a boyfriend. Like, date people with purpose. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Date people for the angle of marriage and looking for your spouse in Christ. And if they don't, you know, lead you closer to God, if they don't make you a better version of yourself, if they're not leading you closer to godly community, if they're not walking alongside you in the race and run towards purity, yeah. and, you know, after the mission of Jesus to, you know, go out and love God and love his people— then they're probably not right for you. And it's okay to say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, they have this guilt yeah. and they feel like, oh, well, what if, like, I leave them to Christ? And, mm. oh, no, like, mm. I shouldn't, you know, walk away from them. They yeah. have no one else. And it's like, mm, well, the danger with that is that a lot of the times when we live with that mindset, yeah. then, you know, we go into the relationship and they end up leading us away exactly. from Christ exactly. and yeah. instead of us leading them closer right. to Christ. So have your standards high. Yep. Um, but have so them good. high in Jesus, yeah. um, and don't let go of the season, you know, for something that isn't God, and see it as a gift, and steward it well. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, and I know that you had talked about, um, what Paul said, and yeah. I had, um, 1 Corinthians 7, 8 actually written I down to talk about, and so I have it screenshotted, and it says, so I say to those who aren't married and to widows, it's better to stay unmarried just as I am, um, and the reason for that is because, it then goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 7.33, but a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his yeah, wife. Right. And so once you go into marriage, or even once you go into dating, your attention is now divided. Yep. And when you're single, your attention isn't divided. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, it might be divided with your job right, and responsibilities, right. yeah. but you're going to have one less distraction and that's yeah. one less thing that's going to keep you away from Jesus. Yeah. Um, now, that's not to say that marriage isn't a bad thing because, yeah. um, you know, it talks about that in the beginning, God created male and female. Yeah. In his image, he created them. And he set Adam and Eve to be husband and wife. And right. it says in Ecclesiastes 4.12, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So, you know, relationships and marriage is good, but ones that are from God. Yeah, if they're absolutely. not from God, then, so you know, they're not good. Yeah. So yeah. there's some Bible verses to time with I that. Love that. Um, and just a reminder, all seasons that you're in are where you're supposed to be, so steward them for goodness because they're a gift, yeah. not punishment. Yeah. Like you said. So good. Can I add one thing that you Oh, of course. About? Okay. Yes. Um, I love, so you talked about contentment. You threw that in there a couple times, and that is um, a huge focus, like, on my book as well, and on my heart and my life as a single woman. Um, and I love, so Philippians 4.13, that verse that we have tattooed and <laughs> sticky noted and um, mm -hmm. everything like that. I think we've talked about this in the small yes. group before. Uh -huh. um, and it's my pet peeve when people just cherry pick that out and plop it into, I'm going to win the soccer game because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength and yada yada. Um, but if we back it up a little bit, Paul actually says, like, I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to be fed. I know what it's like to be rich and poor, to have need and to be full and, um, all the things that I have or all the things that I need. And so I'm um, totally paraphrasing, but basically he's like, I've been on both ends of the spectrum. And he says, but I have learned the secret to contentment. And it's that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And so what I realized is that Paul saying like, I've been in a place where I've wanted something and I've been in a place where I've had everything. The secret is that I can be content because I can rely on and lean in and have access to the strength of Christ. So if you are longing for a relationship, but you are fully surrendered to the Lord, know that that's okay. It's not an either or, it's that and also. It's like a, I want to be married and I'm content if you're doing it well. It's not like I'm doing everything to get out of my singleness and I'm content. Like those can't be balanced. Those yeah. are equal. Um, but I just want to encourage because I wish that someone would have told me that of 
you know, I get in conversations and I leave discouraged because people are like, well, singleness is a blessing. And I'm like, I know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that it's not. I'm not saying that it's not a gift. I still have this desire to be married. Yeah. And I don't think that it's turned off because I believe that one day, like, I'm going to be found and I will get married kind of thing. Um, and so I just want to encourage that because I love this idea of contentment. And it's just saying, here's my desire, Lord. Like, I'm surrendering it. Yeah. And that is the nucleus. Surrender is the nucleus of contentment. And so you have full access to that, to open your heart and have it full of desire while also surrendering and say, Lord, you know the desires of my heart. Yeah. I don't have to hide them from you. I don't have to hide them from people. I bring it to the altar and I say, God, in my desire, I continue to press on. In my desire, I continue to be single. In my desire, not apart from it. He never asked you to, to give that up and say, okay, if I'm single, then that must mean I can't want to be married. Or if I want to do single well, then that must mean I can't want to be married. And it's like, that's not the point. Paul's like, I've like been on both ends. And no. the way to not be tossed like a wave in the ocean is to just be fixated on the strength of Christ who allows you to be content in whatever circumstance or season you're on. Um, because there are days when I'm like, yeah, I'm single. And then there's days when I'm like, I'm single. And it's like, I know, like, it's not this huge emotional toll. It's just this like, eh, kind of whatever thing because I'm fixated and I'm like built on the rock. Um, so that's just a little bit of encouragement and I hope clarification too, yeah. because a lot of people I think think it has to be one or the other. And so contentment is this big messy thing that it really shouldn't be. It's beautiful, but it can't be done apart from Christ. And so that's, that's the key to it all. That's so good. I have three things that I want to add to that. Yeah. Kind of like little quotes. Yeah. And if we just stay on this one question this whole time, yeah, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> we have to um, about it. Yes. Because yeah. there's just so much wisdom within. I mean, yeah. there's so many different paths you can go down with it. Right. But the first thing is, we've talked about this before, is learning to dance in the gray. Yeah. You yeah. know, realizing life doesn't have to be so black and right. white. Right. Um, and realizing that, you know, both desires yeah. are good and we can dance in the middle of, yeah. hey, I'm right. in this in between yeah. and I'm going to praise you, God, in right. this in between. And yeah. it's like, um, in preparing for the podcast, I was worshiping down yeah. here today and, you know, just inviting the Holy Spirit and I was listening to promises. And one mm -hmm. of my favorite parts in the song, it says, when I'm in the middle of the road and I don't know which way to yeah, go, like, so I'll still bless you, I'll yeah. still praise you. And it's just like, you know, when I'm in this in between and you know, I desire both. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna I'm praise gonna you. Too. That's so um, good. And then another thing about, you know, we have to be satisfied in Jesus. Yeah. I actually I don't know if I've ever worn the sweatshirt around you, if you've seen me wearing it, but um it says it's a quote by Clinton Jennings and it says, Until Jesus satisfies your heart, no person mm -hmm. or thing ever will. That's so good. Um That's and so good. It's like I know, like, it touched my life so much, but since wearing the sweatshirt, mm -hmm. like, so many different people, like, I was at, this is, you know, a side story, but I was at the grocery store one time, and I decided, like, I just felt like I needed to go to the actual, like, checkout, yeah. um, versus self-checkout, oh, and yeah. so I went to the actual, you know, cashier, and she, like, I noticed she kept on, like, checking, yeah. the so I, like, moved my hair out of the way so she could, like, see it, <laughs> and she read it, she was like, can I take a picture of that and send that to my cousin? Like, they need to hear that message. Wow. And I was like, yeah, like, of course. Um, and so, like, that's a message wow. that, like, so many people so need many. to hear. Well, that's great. Um, so, yeah, that's really awesome. And then there was something else I was going to say, another quote. Oh, um, when it says, seek first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness and yeah. all these things will be added right. to you. And, um, you know, seek him and all you do and, like, you know, he will meet your desires. Yeah. That's saying that, like, his desires will become your desires. Right. And so, like, if you desire to get married, then, like you said, most right. likely that's what he has. But yeah. even if it isn't, like, eventually your desire like, will change. Yeah. And so it's like your desires will always be met in life when you're rooted in Christ because yeah. your desires are going to so become good. his desires. Yeah. So that makes singleness a lot better, too, because yeah. then we're able to be content where we are because our desires are in Christ. Yep. And we're going to be exactly where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, really that's awesome. so good. I love that. I can't wait to see that sweatshirt, too. Yes. I... <laughs> Yeah. I should have worn it. I was thinking about that when she yeah. said to me, I was like, what am I going to put that so things. perfect. Yes, I'll have to wear it yeah. sometime. And yeah. All right. Yes. Okay, so are we ready for